man, Kai and I practice a lot. We play a lot. I love her so much. And we really didn't have expectations of making it to the podium. I just knew that she would show off. She would look great. She would leap high. And, uh, but this is a huge surprise. Just amazing. I, I'm, I'm over the moon. It's exciting. Kai is uh, an Aussie. Uh, she was a rehome, so she was too much for the family that had her. And uh, so they were looking for a home that was going to be more active. So um, we started playing with her and uh, really took it easy with her because she was such a huge leaper. I mean, just a huge leaper. So on just a normal throw out, Kai would jump seven feet in the air and grab it out of the air. Um, her favorite is like long throws and just loving life. And that's the cool thing about rescue dogs. You know, we have a lot of dogs and almost all of them are rescued. And uh, the rescue dogs, like, can you imagine what their life would have been without getting the chance to get in a home where their skills and uh, the things that they, you know, they get to show off where, a tip, you know, otherwise they'd have been in a shelter barking and hoping someone would take them home. You go find a dog that's a year and a half, two years old, you can get its drive, you can determine uh, this is a dog that's going to play with you, that's going to fit into your home and be a great fit. I think rollers are the best way to get started because they activate that prey drive, the dogs get excited. A mistake people commonly make is they throw the disc, they're like, here, catch it, throw the disc at the dog. So um, throw the disc away from the dog, get those rollers, um, and just be careful to like have to have uh, realistic expectations. Like uh, It takes years. It takes years to be good. You know, so it, this is a sport that requires a lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of practice. And then I would say, um, I would say go to a local club because there are people there who can help you. They can get you started on the right path. When we, we're all like, none of us are dog smart when we start out. We don't know, you know, we all show up at a dog event with a leash, you know, and eventually we've got a, uh, a generator and a tent, you know, and all this gear. It takes some time. And so when you're part of a club, when you have that, um, sort of input, it really helps accelerate your learning curve. Learn how to throw, and then learn basic dog uh, behavior. You, know, you really want to understand how your dog thinks and operates, so go to an expert. Go to someone who knows that stuff and can teach you. If you do that, you're going to have a great career. You're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, from the very beginning, Sky, the Skyhound's hyperflight experience is like the best. So the way, the way they take care of the competitors, uh, from the players packs in the beginning to the banquet, like we're all looking forward to the banquet. Um, just the respect uh, that the, the players get from the people running the event is, you know, this is the highlight of the year. It's a long, it's a great week, you know, it's a week long experience. Um, you get to play dog thon, extreme distance, and then culminate in, in the, uh, this, this classic. And it's just the best experience that, that I've had as a disc dogger. Um, it really set the standard for me. You know, that's what, that's the experience you want to have at Skyhounds. The best thing about her is her leaping, and the second best thing about her is her cuddling. So she's a great cuddler, she loves belly rubs, and uh, when she isn't leaping, she's belly rubbing. <laughs>